Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another Deluxe Man Late Night Q&A, where I answer your questions in under 15 minutes. If you have a question for me, please go to my Facebook page, like it, and when I ask for questions every Wednesday, post them, and I will answer as many as I can in 15 minutes. With that said, let's get started. Deluxe Man, when will you bring back the what fans want versus what corporate wants video series. Well, the reason I haven't been posting them as of lately is simply because I haven't had the time to do it. I will never give you anything on this channel that isn't 100%. I want everything I give you to be top quality, something you can enjoy, rewatch, and over and over and over again enjoy it, you know. And I can't do that right now with my time. But starting next year, Hopefully, I will. The plan is to make time to do that again. I love making that uh, series. I love making the videos. I love uh, the characters that I've made, Mike and Jack. So you will see them again. I promise you. So next year, look forward to that. Next question. Would the WWE catch your attention if they let Survivor Series with no champion at all? That would be interesting. That's something we're not expecting to happen because many people expect either Ambrose or Reigns to walk out as champion. I don't think anyone is expecting no one to walk out. What if, you know, we get not a cash in, but we get someone else completely different come up and win the championship like Baron Corbin? Would be nice. Or Samoa Joe. You never know, man. I want to see the WWE do stuff like that. Go outside the box. Don't do what the fans are expecting you to do. You know, go with an option that no one sees coming. Because that is going to create you interest going forward. You know? Um, so I like your idea for the simple fact that no one else thought about it. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to walk out with Roman Reigns as champion. Let's go ahead and say that right now, okay? But thank you for asking me that. Thoughts on the Houston Rockets firing Kevin McHale? Um, tell you what, I heard that the Rockets haven't been getting along with their coach. So, seeing them go on this losing streak, I kind of felt like something was going to happen. And them firing their coach sucks for him. But... If it's necessary to make the team better, we'll see what happens. I, quite frankly, never really was a big fan of Mikhail. Um, I just felt like he just didn't really gel well with the Rockets. I felt like, you know, they could do better with a much more seasoned coach. Or a coach that has a record of being successful, of success, you know? So we'll see what happens with that. It sucks that Kevin lost his job, but he'll be fine. He'll find somewhere else to work. Uh, let's see here. Is Samoa Joe finally signed with WWE? I guess he is. I mean, at this point in time, I don't see him working at any indie dates. He's not working with ROH. I would assume he is full-time WWE. And if that's the case, awesome. I think Samoa Joe is going to be a great asset to that company in the near future your thoughts on the following wrestlers okay adam cole i like adam cole i think he is breaded for wwe one day i think he will do an excellent job as uh you know a heel in nxt or a manager or someone uh, or just a heel character or heel wrestler um, whatever role they want to give him, I think he would work well. I think that boy is that boy. He's young. That's why I call him a boy. But I think that guy is going to do um, wonders for the wrestling business. And I think when he gets to WWE, he's just going to make a good career. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Chuck Taylor. I don't know who Chuck Taylor is. I don't know who Chuck Taylor is. I don't know who Zack Sabre Jr. is. I don't know who either of those guys are. I need to check them out. So thank you for mentioning them because now I'm interested in knowing who they are. What has been your favorite Survivor Series pay-per-view? Survivor Series 2002. That is the best one. 
That one has yet to be topped, in my personal opinion. Well, 2000 was really good as well. But I personally love 2002, the Elimination Chamber debut. Great pay-per-view overall. Um, although, I really enjoyed 2003, mainly for the Survivor Series match and Vince McMahon versus The Undertaker. Um, I don't know, man. 2002 is still my favorite. Do you think Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose will be a good match? Yes, it will be a good match. I think those two um, are going to tear the house down. I think they have good chemistry. I think the crowd will be invested into it, whether they pick Ambrose or Roman Reigns to fight. Um, I personally wish their match at Survivor Series had a little bit more flair, a little bit more heat to it. You know, I know it's being done in contentionship for the World Championship, which is fine. But I still feel like there's a lot more that could be done with these two. And hopefully, the next time we see them, one of them is a heel. Next question. If you could choose any wrestler to return to WWE, who would you choose? And he gave me a list to choose from. Number one is Jeff Hardy. Number two is Matt Hardy. Number three is Bobby Lashley. Number four is CM Punk. And number five is Goldberg. Um, Out of the people on that list, I would go with CM Punk. Why? He's coming from UFC. He has that notoriety, you know, and he can contribute more to the roster, feuds, matches, whatever you want, maybe even commentary. He can contribute more to the product than the other four. I can see Goldberg coming back, but just for one match. Same thing with Bobby Lashley. Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, yeah, they can also contribute tag team or singles, but... I don't see them having a long-term contribution to the company, unlike CM Punk. With Seth Rollins out of action for the next several months, will WrestleMania 32 be any good? Yeah, I still think the company can pull together a good WrestleMania, despite not having Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins does not make the show. He's a great talent, and when he comes back, he'll get a great pop, he'll have a great reception, perhaps the top babyface in the company when he comes back. However, the WWE is not Seth Rollins, just like the WWE is not John Cena or Randy Orton. Who do you think will compete in the 5-on-5 five five traditional Survivor Series matches Survivor Series? I would have to say Cesaro, someone like the Dudley Boys, Callisto, uh, Sin Cara. There you go. <laughs> Cesaro, Dudley's, Callisto, Sin Cara versus, I don't know, the New Day, Sheamus, and King Barrett. I really don't know, guys. It's a random match being made just to fill up time. I wish it had build. I wish it had a purpose. But it's just going to be a random match that they will most likely throw on the pre-show. Because they're lazy. So there you go. Um, since both of Reed's parents have come out and said that neither of them knew about the angle this past Monday. Uh, does this change your take on it? It did. I did a video about this already. I feel they should have told Ric Flair and Elizabeth. As a matter of fact, I feel they should have asked them first. Yes, they should have gotten permission to use Ric Flair in their storylines. Why? Because it's their son. Their daughter is going to use their son's death to advance an on-screen fantasy feud. The least they can do is ask them if that's okay. And they didn't even do that. That, to me, is wrong. And I believe they owe both Ric Flair and Elizabeth an apology. Both of them. That's my opinion on it. Now, you can still sit there and tell me that, well, back in the Attitude Era, they did this all the time. Yes, they did very offensive stuff. But I guarantee you, if it was something very, very drastic, like Paul Bearer's ashes being poured on The Undertaker, they got consent from the people who were involved with Paul Bearer's death. They got consent from them first before they did something like that or anything else. Trish Stratus barking like a dog to Vince. They got consent from Trish first before she did something like that. And Trish was fine with it. You know, be tasteful with what you book. And make it make sense. Alright. So that's my thoughts on it, man. But go watch the video if you want more thoughts on it. Other than size and looks, 
Why do you think WWE pushes guys like Roman Reigns over guys like Ziggler and Cesaro? Um, because they want to. Because that's who they want to be at the top of the bracket. Because he's the kind of guy that has the image that they're looking for. You know, they have a certain image they want. And whether that goes along with the crowd or not, they don't care. They want their guy to look a certain way, to act a certain way, to be presented or to present himself in a certain manner. Those are the people they push. It's not fair. It's stupid. It's bad for business to do things that way. The best way to, the best way to make money off of your business is very easy. Book the people the crowd love the most. It's easy, but WWE wants to make it hard themselves, and that is why they're not doing very well, nowadays at least. Do you think we may have a surprise heel turn at Survivor Series? Well, I hope we do. I hope the WWE wants to create interest for their product. I hope the WWE is planning on making fans watch during WrestleMania season. They do desperately need something new to happen. Sheamus cashing in is not new. Roman Reigns walking out as champion as a babyface is not new. Dean Ambrose doing it as a babyface too is something unexpected, but I don't think it's new either. They need something. They need a shakeup. Roman Reigns turning heel is something that is new. It's something they can do. Yes, I know me saying it makes it predictable, and I know someone like Steve Austin saying it makes it predictable, but it is the best option. The guy has to go heel. The guy needs to get a different kind of character. Otherwise, he will not be an interesting champion. That's the sad reality. All right, this question comes from Taylor Johnson, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Taylor. Um, your question is, what is the number one match you want to see at WrestleMania 32? Brian versus Lesnar. I will push for that match until I can't push no more. I don't care if we get that match or not. Okay, maybe we won't get that match. If we don't get that match, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. There you go. That's a match that needs to happen eventually. What's your favorite Undertaker match of all time? Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 25. You want to know why? Because I was there live. It was the very first WrestleMania experience that I went to. And it was the very first time I saw Undertaker and Shawn Michaels live. And to me, that is the greatest WrestleMania match ever. For me, personally, because I was there live. I know I'm biased, and that's what it is. But that match holds a special place in my heart because I was there live to see it. Anyways, next question. Thoughts on Paige being engaged? I will shoot him. No, I'm joking. Congratulations to Paige. Who is your celebrity crush? I have too many, but for the sake of this commentary Q&A, I am going to pick Penelope Cruz. You want to know why? Because I'm looking at Pirates of the Caribbean 4, uh, that fourth movie that came out, and she is hot. She is extremely hot. I don't care about her accent being hard to understand. She is hot, 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 hot. If she wasn't on my TV, it would most likely be Beyonce. But Penelope Cruz, right now, is my celebrity crush. Your thoughts on Sasha Banks turning babyface? Absolutely, let's go. Heel or babyface, just give that woman more TV time because she is hot, 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 and she's awesome inside the ring. If WWE gave you $200, what eight shirts would you buy? Well, 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 let me see. I would buy a soft t-shirt, Enzo Amore and Big Cass, a Sasha Banks t-shirt, I don't give a damn. I would buy a t-shirt from her. I'd buy a t-shirt from Bailey, because I love Bailey. Definitely. Finn Balor didn't have his t-shirt yet. Let me see. Um, who haven't I gotten? Samoa Joe, that's five. Sami Zayn, that's six. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, do I really want? No, no, no. Dean Ambrose. I trade Dean Ambrose for Dolph Ziggler, seven. And then number eight would be Apollo Crews. Boom, baby. Everyone from NXT, because NXT kicks the main rosters out. Adios. With that said, guys, this is going to conclude my Q&A for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. This is your boy, Deluxe Man, signing off. Deuces.